Welcome back to the Dallas Prospect, everybody. I am DDP, and uh, things are a little bit bumpy right now. The Mavericks are not really on a good roll. They were sitting eight and two, and everything looked like it was great. At one point, you had a, a share of the top seed in the Western Conference. And now, in the blink of an eye, it has pretty much shifted. And the main reason for that is, in fact, the defense. Dallas now sits at 9-5. and five. Lose your first back-to-back -back having to play Milwaukee in what was a pretty good game. And then having to turn that around and go play the Kings. Now, Sacramento is one of those teams. They're good, but they have weirdly always owned Dallas for, I say always, pretty much as long as Luke has been in the league, they've owned Dallas. I don't think there's a correlation to that. I just think that's just what's happened. But the main problems for the Mavericks here are the defense. Like, <clears throat> the thing in which I said they've made strides, there's still some glaring holes that are being exposed for this team. You know, we saw it first when Derek Lively had to miss a game due to illness, non-COVID illness. And uh, the Raptors obliterated them in the paint with 72 points. That was that was jarring. And we've also seen other moments where, while, hey, Lively's got big upside and the defense looks like it's good, like it, it can be good, there's just not enough of that quality throughout the roster. The bench in particular, with Dwight Powell and Tim Hardaway Jr., your bench defense is just trash. It is. Like, that's that's really what's hurting Dallas right now, I feel like, is Hardaway, you know, he, he's in the running right now for six man of the year, and hey, kudos to him. But that that defensive metric that I think Locked On Mavs had, uh, the zero percentile, I didn't know that was, I didn't know that was feasible. I would have thought you'd at least be in the first percentile. But, uh, oofa. So they've got some problems that they got to figure out, and that means roster changes, whether it's trades, signings, whatever, need to happen. Because as Mavs highlights put it, simply put, Luka and Kyrie are great. Yes, we know that. Grant is good. I, I don't think he's a great player. I think he's a very good player, a guy you'd like to have, and he was a significant addition to this team. But there's still something missing there, and I don't think he's got a next level to go to where you're going to talk about him as being like a very good or a great player. I think he is a very useful player, a good player to have, but you can't expect him to like be in that next tier down even from Luka and Kyrie. He, he's a very good role player. Live, as I said, lively. I, two live crew, as I like to say. Uh, he's got some good upside, but you know there's going to be some growing pains. We know that. And I don't really know what's going on with Josh Green right now. I kind of feel like there's an indecisiveness there that, that's frustrating. Because you see the flashes. You see the moments where you're like, okay, there it is. There's the athleticism. There's the defense. The guy plays like his hair is on fire every play. And I love that. But there's something lacking there. And we're kind of getting to the point where he's got to he's got to show it. He's got to show. I know he just got a new deal, so obviously he's here for a minute. He got a new three year deal, but if he's going to be anything like what we hope he could be, he's got to start to turn that corner soon. The last fourteen games, the Mavericks opponents have averaged one hundred twenty point four points per game on forty nine point nine percent shooting from the field. That from Landon Landon Thomas. That is oof. In 14 games, the Mavericks opponents are averaging 120 points per game on basically 50% shooting. That's not just that's not just abysmal, that's putrid. We see flashes. We see moments where they can lock it down. The third quarter has been very good to the Mavericks for most of the year. They're, they're able to smother teams. They're making halftime adjustments, and they're smothering teams defensively. Uh, that first of the two Pelican games... It was a completely different team in the second half. The Pelicans were giving them all kinds of trouble and business in the first half. And in the second half, the Mavericks just smothered them. And then in the rematch two days later, Dallas looked like they were hung over as if they'd been partying on Bourbon Street. I guess when you hang over in, uh, in New Orleans, that's going to happen. But 
It's uh, it's interesting. I liked what Dalton Trigg had here too. He says a reminder that in kids first two seasons as head coach, the Mavericks have been 500 at the 30 game mark of each year. He says, it'll be interesting to see where they're at this season. So this is year three, obviously with kid. So that is an important metric. And for us currently sitting here, as I mentioned before at nine and five, you're still fifth. I believe last I looked in the West. Let me check that out now, actually, as I'm saying this, the Mavericks are fourth in the West, excuse me, are fourth in the West at nine and five, but they have lost two in a row, which I, is their first losing streak of the year. They're still only a game and a half back, but you just get the feeling looking at this defense that there are major concerns that have to be addressed. And I don't know if it can be addressed in a schematic way so much as just having to continue making improvements on the personnel. So life comes at you fast. You have to be ready to make these sorts of adjustments. But, you know, I don't want to sound all gloom and doom. There is some really good stuff going on with this team. Luca obviously is Luca. He's looking, I, I like that the pace is faster. The pace at which they're playing with is faster this year. Kyrie has kind of shook off a lot of that rust and looks more like we expect him to be. Um, Derek Jones Jr. Looks like, again, a very good player they picked up and the player that we thought he could be in Dallas. Uh, I'm really encouraged by his three point percentage being what it is. He's never been a great three point shooter. And at least from a percentage standpoint, He's fitting in very well with Dallas, and that's great. Uh, I look as well at um, Tim Hardaway Jr. You know, through 14 games, he's averaging 18 points, 3.6 boards, and almost two assists per game. That's on 44.5% from the field, 40.5% from three, and 91% at the free throw line. That's great, especially because you're probably wanting to uh, – to trade him at the deadline. I mean, that's been an open secret, basically. The Mavericks are wanting to move on from him. That, hell, it's been the talk for two or three years already. So with that being the case, you've got you've got some, some positives there. If he's going to play at this level, one, maybe they reconsider it. I think because of the defense, you can't afford to reconsider it. But maybe you're able to actually move him after all and something of relative note at the deadline. But the problem... Right now with this team, with the defense just not there with any consistency, it's obviously wasn't there in the the game against the Kings. You basically had, what, like half a quarter where they just couldn't really find a rhythm offensively and they just didn't have it. And that's the difference of the game because you have to be able to score this team right now. You have to be able to score like 130 points per game if you're going to win these games just with how the defense is playing that's what you have to do and so even just having a half quarter where you didn't really have it that's the difference and you lose that game by 16 points at home yeah and Sabonis absolutely cooked him man Sabonis demolished Dallas in this game what do you end up with here he had a 30 spot right Sabonis 32 points 13 boards six assists he was 13 of 15 from the field, and both of those misses were threes. Good googly moogly, man. Six of 10 at the line. Yeah, a plus 16. Sabon <laughs> Sabonis is a nice player, but yeah, 13 of 15 really should not happen uh, in, in that respect. So they got some problems they got to work through here. And uh, that's, that's just... That one hurts. You know, that that one hurts to to have that kind of laying an egg performance there. Kyrie, 23 points. Um, the only thing on Kyrie that stands out to me, and again, he's been dealing with the foot a little bit, two boards, one assist. His, his shoot field goal percentage was okay, 8 of 17. I don't like seeing, and I know he plays shooting guard for Dallas, not point guard, but I want to see him creating a little bit more. Luca posts a near triple-double with 25, 10, and 7. But again, neither of those guys really put left their fingerprints on the game, it felt like. It just kind of felt like Dallas was just hanging around, and then the offense went cold for that stretch, and that was the difference. So I've got mixed feelings on this team. On one hand, I do think their ceiling is higher than last year. I think they have made substantial improvements from last year's roster. But I look at the deficiencies that are still there on defense and at times can be 
equally glaring to what they were late last year. And that really gives me pause about the fit of it. The fact that we're still giving like Dwight Powell in 13 minutes against the Kings had no points, one rebound, one assist, one of four from the field. You, you can't, you can't be giving those kind of minutes to Powell. Conversely, you had five minutes for Rashawn Holmes against his former team, and he gives you seven and two on three of three shooting. Like, what, what are you doing? What is the conversation here? I don't understand the minutes distribution that we're running here. Dwight Powell, good screen setter, rim roller. Okay, yeah, sure. The defense isn't there. The offense isn't there. There's not a damn damn opponent in the league who is concerned if Dwight Powell is on the floor. So I don't understand what Dallas is sticking with in this. He's got to just be the ultimate like locker room culture guy that coaches particularly like because the minutes distribution that he's still benefiting from is just kind of head scratching to me. I don't really understand why he gets that kind of uh that kind of preference, preferential treatment here. But the Mavericks still have time, obviously. We're very early in the season. It is still a better start, but they haven't had a whole lot of great opponents yet. Now you're about to have a little bit of a rude awakening because now you got to go to LA for a two-game trip. You got the Lakers, and then you got the, the Clippers the Clippers, yeah, they've been skidding since the James Harden thing. They lost like six straight, I think, with all that. But they are slowly figuring things out a little bit. He is slowly playing his way into shape and into a rhythm. So the Clippers are not a team to look past at all. Uh, the Lakers are still the Lakers. And, you know, Houston, that's a surprise team a little bit as well. I, I did not anticipate Houston being what i've seen from them so far like yeah they're they're not like a substantial team but they're better than they've been in years past they're six and six seventh in the west that's better than the suns actually um yeah they've lost three straight but i still think houston is uh an intriguing an intriguing team in the west at least a team that looks like they're on an upward swing even if it's going to take a little bit of time and so i just don't want dallas who hasn't had that strong of a strength of schedule yet and yet finds himself sitting at nine and four. I think they've won one out of like three games against teams with a 500 or a better record. That's concerning to me. Um, so that's, that's the major stuff that I'm looking at as I'm trying to assess what is this Mavericks team early on in the year? What can we anticipate from them? But, you know, those next three games close out the month, and then you got the Grizzlies twice. You got the Thunder, who are currently above you at third in the West. You got the Lakers again, the Timberwolves, the Blazers are down right now. Then you got the Nuggets. Like, your next stretch of games here is really going to give you an indication of how good you are. And right now, looking at this team, they kind of look like a mess because the defense that I saw a lot of and looked to be on an upward swing early on in the year, not so much looking like that right at this precise minute. As I, yeah, no, not this precise minute. And so I've got questions about this team i want to really see what jason kidd can do i know some people are already saying like looking at this stretch and saying like well this is just confirmation it was fool's gold before to start the year with that eight and two start um this is not this is not the guy for for the mavericks coaching future if you want to talk about get the team that gets them or the guy that gets them to another title or at least to sincere contention they're already out on kid I'm still somewhere in the middle. I think the highs you saw of year one, particularly that playoff run, and then what you saw in year two was pretty bad. I think so far it's kind of in the middle. I think you have to allow more time. When things were as bad as they were at the end of the year before, I think you have to allow for some time. But there's also some strange rotational decisions, minutes distribution, and even just kind of matchup work here. Uh, Landon Thomas, this was uh, after the Kings game yesterday, had a good uh, tweet here. He asked Kidd in the post game what went into the decision behind starting Josh Green in the second half. And Kidd pointed out that opponents have started putting smaller players on Lively and putting their five on Derek Jones Jr. or Green. So he said, according to him, Green handled it well and he thought he did a good job. But that kind of felt like a chess move that Dallas just didn't really have a solid answer for. 
it kind of seemed like the at the very least the move did not pan out as they had hoped so i'm kind of mixed feelings right now on this team in this next stretch of games where again we're talking lakers clippers rockets grizzlies thunder i could see them being what do they get a couple of those realistically like do they get a couple of those i don't know if things are gonna go bad this stretch might very quickly show us that and they'll probably have their team meeting come to jesus moment but right now i tend to think this is a team early on they've 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 done well but they've been untested unproven and the few tests they have gotten early on haven't really looked that great for them so is it fool's gold i don't know I do think they're on the upward swing. The question is, is this team taking a, a massive leap forward? Or is this just a, a step, a single step, maybe even a baby step in the right direction from where they ended up last year? Let me know in the comments. Do you think the Mavericks start to get back on the right track here? Do you think they rattle off a couple wins and shut me up in record time? I would love that, actually. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. If you haven't already, like the video, and until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!